tied by a, a gentleman called Franz Better. But this is the like an Adams variant of that. Just others, it's the same much the same fly except they're used, but the tips of the grizzle hackle. Now this is a as you can see in this one here. These have been trimmed slightly. What I've done is I've got two cock hackles, very fine. These are from a, a neck, and uh, and the, these feathers are approximately like just slightly longer than two inches. And what I do is I, I, I tie the tips. Use the tips for the first fly, and as I go down, I would tie another fly, and you would get at least four flies from these two feathers, and it doesn't make the fly look really bad at all. It just gives a nice impression of the wing, and as you can see, most fish will not notice. Certainly, I don't, but it doesn't bother me, and they still keep catching. Now, this fly would be is ideal for trout and grayling. The grayling especially love it at this time of the year. Uh, so it's a fly I would certainly tie and I mean to give an idea. Uh tie a few if you if you really like the fly, there's a few there. Uh, and I do. So ties fourteen, sixteens and eighteens. This is a size sixteen. It's quite simple. Just put the hook into the vise. Make sure it's a nice ping comes from it, you can get a wee bit higher so you can see it all. There we are. Thread. Now I, I swap between a brown and a yellow thread. This is just a uni thread AO and dark brown. And uh, the yellow just slightly lightens up a bit. But I still use the exact same materials. Just going to put a wee bit of wax on the thread. Just gives it a bit more grip. And you'll see the reason why. I just need it for tying in the wing. Uh, especially the deer here. Now take the thread halfway down. And then come up probably about just shorter halfway back up. This will give you a position for the the grizzle hackles, the hackle tips. Now these have got a natural curve on coming from the feather or from the cape. This is the cape here. And they naturally curve into one another. So you want this to use as much this as an advantage to your fly. So I'm going to tie the tips forward of the eye and curving away from one another. Just like as you can see there. Just make sure they're lined up. And then length. You're looking at least the length, the full length of the hook tied forward. Just do a pinch and loop. Two or three turns to make sure it's secure. You can check to see the length. Just check, twist the fly to the side. The length is good. Yep. And trim this, these away. And as I said, don't throw these away. These will easily make another three flies. Now, when that's on top, the first thing I'm going to do is just put a wee bit of wax on my thread again. Make sure they're secure. Now, there's different types of hair you can use for the comparison, like a coastal deer and so on. Now, unfortunately, the coastal deer, which is here, this is it. The fine fibres at the end are just a tad too long for me. So, what I'm doing with this is using it for the tail. But for the, the wing, I'm just using a... This is the roe deer. And this is slightly in the towards the belly side. It's a wee bit soft and very light and I'm basically only wanting the tips. Now if you look there the tips are a bit, the dark tip is a bit shorter and it's much easier to tie in and it suits what I'm tying. It's the fly works extremely well. Now don't be shy of the amount. Just cut it in close to the skin. Just open out the fibres. Now use a small comb or so to bring out any of the under fur which you must remove makes it much easier to stack the hairs and I'm going to stack it and you put the tips in first and then you basically tap on your desk make sure that the hairs are well stacked and you see the tips are well lined up get a nice mark as well which you're looking for and then basically what I'm going to do is tie it shorter than the wing. It has to be shorter than the wing. Now when I offer this up, you look in there. So there's the wing length. It's obviously longer than the, the deer here. Just going to make sure it's stacked a wee bit better. Just tuck it a wee bit. You want it to be quite rough this fly anyway. Don't be too perfect with the fly. And then what I do is come in on top. 
them down nice and tight, keeping a hold of the cut ends, don't let them go. And as you wind down, take a thread. Now, with this deer hair, I can actually break it. You see how it breaks? As I'm winding down, it just gets thinner. As I break the deer hair, it's important that you tie it in nice and tight. Now, I'm just going to break these ends away now. As you can see, it's only the tips you're interested in. You have to be brave to do that, but I, I've just tied a f that many and I'm used to it. Now, the, what I, the best thing to do now is just to see how the deer hair and the wings are positioned. Now, you're going to use dubbing to lift these and pull them, hold them back. So what I'm going to do is make sure they're spread. Just have a wee check at this point, because we'll bring them back down. Just press them with my finger, and you can see how they're sitting up nice. And that's the way you're looking. Basically, so when you put your tail on, and then you come up with the dubbing, then the dubbing holds the wing in place, and the deer hair up. So I'm just going to bring it back out of the way. Just put a wee bit of wax again on my thread. And carry on down until just as it comes round the bend. There's one fibre there. There always is one that gets in the way. There we are. Now this is a coastal deer. Now it's quite a nice fibre. You could use microfibers, you could use paco fibres, you could do what you like. I'm just going to use the deer hair. So I'm keeping it so basically all natural. Just like the, the row, I'm removing the fine fluff because I'm going to stack it. Just put it into your stacker. Tap on your desk. And then there's our tail there, as you can see. Just hold that, the length that we want. Now the length, you're looking the shank to the, the hook length. Put that into your finger and thumb. Now I'm going to trim this, so before I tie it in, take away the excess, just offer it with the cut ends towards myself. And as I bring the turn up, this turn will bring the cut ends on the top. And then I'm going to take the thread quite, spreading the thread turns out, catching in these ends. Not too tight, just a bit enough so that I can catch it in and hold it down as you can see. Just a wee bit of wax on my thread again and then work my way back down. Now the dubbing I'm using, it's just a blend of my own. That's it here. Now the blend, it's just a, a natural rabbit and a fox squirrel, red fox squirrel, American squirrel skin. I've just removed the hair from the skin and then blended it together. So we just remove, take some of this, offer it to the thread just lightly, using your finger as the anchor point. As you twist the dubbin around one way, the anchor point of the holding the dubbin's at the bottom, so it twists to your finger. Now I want it to basically come the other way, meaning when I do a turn, my anchor point then becomes here. So then what I can do is twist the dubbin and tighten it up and wind up, keep it as thin as you can. Just follow the shape of the body. Or if you've got a couple of steps, you can actually encourage the steps out by doing an extra turn or so. All the way up. And then this is ready now to lift the wing and the deer here. Now it's important that you basically bring like your thumb to the front, pushing these back. Get the deer hair and the wings to sit where you want. And when you're happy, you've got all the fibres back, just basically hold them with your finger, put some dub and turns in front, and then basically just keep doing this until you build up small thorax. Now what I'm going to do at this point is just check that I've got a nice balance at the back. Underneath, if you're not, you can bring the dub in to the back, and then back to the front, which should balance it up. Just going to finish off this dubbing. You can stroke it back with your fingers. Then the simplest way to basically secure the head is to put some varnish on your thread, and then whip finish. You're looking three to four turns of the whip finish. Just watch you don't catch any here. There's always one or two fibres. And there's one here I don't want to catch, so be careful you don't catch this other, uh, the thread. It's worthwhile taking your time. Always keeping the thread tight. 
pull the thread, tighten up the quick finish. Enemy fibers to see if you've caught them, trim them away. Trim away your thread. And now you can basically you can read it, leave it the way it is, or you can tidy it up a wee bit for the camera so you can see what I've done. Uh, most times I just throw it in the box and I let nature tidy it up when I start to cast it. The fish are quite happy to take it like that. You see, it's a nice fly, it sits nice.